Hey YouTube, on this episode of South Hawk Computing, we'll be doing the Zero Edge Z1 2.4 dash camera, and that's coming up next. Hey YouTube, Dan from South Hawk Computing, and today we have another dash cam review. So you're probably saying, hey Dan, didn't you just do one last time? Well, apparently one of our viewers, they had a request, and I wanted to fulfill that request. So today, it's the Zero Edge Model Z1 Car Black Box, or Car DVR. So let's get this bad boy opened and see what we got. Okay, so what do we have here? So we have a USB cable. That's probably the one that we're gonna use in the car. It's extra long here. We have a shorter version of the USB, which I'm pretty sure will be used when you connect this device to your machine. We got a nice little 16 gig micro SD card. Pretty good. We also got the suction cup mount. Not sure what these clips are for, but I'm sure if we investigate, we'll find out. We got the nice little cigarette light adapter to two USB ports, which is pretty nifty. I've never seen that before on car DVR. We got a wipe, the camera, and actually the instructions. So we're going to hook this camera up and see what kind of features we get. But before we continue, I'm not going to actually use the 16 gig that came with it. I'm actually going to use a micro SD card, 32 gig from G-Skill. So, I got the manual in front of me here, so let's do the rundown. This is obviously the OK button, up and down. This red button here is the park button. Number five is listed as the emergency button or SOS mode. Then when we turn this thing to the side, we have the power button, SD card, and this M, which stands for menu button. Other side here, we have the USB port. And the other slot is labeled as a 2.5 millimeter AV port, but we didn't have any AV cables that came with it, so that's rather interesting. When we turn this unit upside down, looks like we have the slot for the microphone and what appears to be a LED light, probably for night vision. And on top, it looks like we have a reset button right here, and that's pretty much it. That's pretty interesting. One thing I did notice, though, that <clears throat> when I used the standard USB cable, it wanted to go into disk mode and actually mount on Windows, and that I, there was no way for me to use this device uh, while it was plugged in with a standard USB cable, but apparently this cable that's provided, the long one, just supplies USB power. So you live and you learn, I suppose. So let's see what we got on this guy here. Right away, it started filming, and let's see if we can find out what these icons mean. So I think these are the modes that are on, on top here that we can go across. So let's see if I'm right about this. So the down button here, when this is actually not recording, which I'll stop it right now, the down button seems to enable and disable motion detect. So the up button, what that does is enable and disable the microphone on this device. Let's go record and hit the emergency button. The emergency button, I guess, locks it so this way the file won't get erased. Okay, let's see if we can get into the menus here. So I'm going to hit the menu button over here. There you go. So here you could actually set your resolutions. We'll try the 1080p and 720p resolutions while we're driving around. We're not going to bother with the 640, but let's see what else we have listed there. All right, so those are the only options for that. So now we're going to go... We continue to hit the menu button and it gets us across, so audio on or off. Right now it's keeping it off, but I want it on. Recording loop, that's a lot of options here actually. One, three, five, ten. What else? And completely off. So it'll do one continuous file apparently. So we'll leave it on three. And G sensor sensitivity. Alright, it's set the middle sensitivity, so we'll keep it on that. Parking mode on or off, and we're gonna keep it off. 
Motion detect. They're keeping it on. I'm okay with keeping it off. English? Yep. Alright, and here's the setup. So now we set up the date and time, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, we go back to the menu. Auto power on off. Let's see what menus we have here. So I'm assuming once the power is cut, that's how you shut this device off. So frequency, LCD backlight. It shuts off after one minute once it starts recording. Sound effects, whether or not you want the audio sound going off. Format, obviously to format the card, this is a previously used S micro SD card, so we're gonna go ahead and do that now. Default settings, firmware version, let's go ahead and check that out. So 21181, and that's it. That covers all the menus in this device's uh, firmware here. So next up, we'll throw it in the car, see what kind of footage we get. Again, we'll be doing the 1080p and 720p settings. I'll do the day and night shots for both of these resolutions and see what kind of quality we get. We'll be right back. Here is our 1080p daytime shot. Don't let my cloudy window skew the results on this camera's particular sensor here, but pretty much this is one of the best daytime cameras that I've seen thus far. I like the quality that I got off of it. Obviously, it's still not a true 1080p resolution, but for the most part, when you set this camera to the 720p resolution, it seems like that's the more native res for this camera. But all in all, daytime shots came in nice and crisp, no choppiness on the 1080p or 720p settings. So kudos for these guys. My only complaint, however, is the microphone on this one is very bassy. It's clear enough, but for whatever reason, there's a ton of bass, especially when you try to play it back with surround sound speakers such as mine, you notice that there's something up with the audio quality. Here we have our nighttime shot, and it does really well when there's surrounding light. Surprisingly, with street lamps, other cars, lights from buildings, you name it. It's actually a, one of the top performers, I want to say, for nighttime shots, so I'm very impressed by that. As well as when it gets completely dark, we'll punch that up right now, you actually see a lot of the surrounding area that gets illuminated by the front headlamps. So double thumbs up for these guys for actually producing a camera that could actually give you a nighttime view as well. As I stated before at the beginning of the video, I did have to shut off the automatic nighttime light. It was a LED. The LED auto turned on when it sensed that it was too dark, but the problem was it was illuminating the entire cabin in the car, so we couldn't have that going on. So again, this LED is not a night vision LED, it's an actual flashlight LED. Okay, so final wrap up for this camera here. What do I like about it? Well, you got the nice compact size. It's kind of refreshing that you don't have this monster of a camera on your windshield here, which is great. Really good daytime and nighttime shots. Also. Two thumbs up for that. I really enjoyed the better than average quality, which isn't saying it's the best, but hey, you know what? It's way better than what we've tested before. What I didn't like about the camera was the audio quality. It was definitely too bassy. Didn't like that too much, especially playing it back on my surround sound speakers on my desktop. And one of the biggest disappointments about this camera was it said it was H.264 video formats when it was only doing motion JPEG. So negative points for that. So at the end of the day, would I buy this camera? Yes or no? I don't know. For the $50 price point that I bought it at, I was expecting it to have better video compression other than motion JPEG. So for that simple reason, I wouldn't buy it. As good as the daytime and nighttime shots were, for a camera with a $50 price point here, I would expect nothing less than H.264 video compression codecs to be on this particular camera. So that pretty much wraps everything up here. If you like what you see, obviously subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment, do what you gotta do. It'll be greatly appreciated. This is Dan from Southall Computing, and as always folks, until the next time. Mm -hmm.